So in this video, I want to talk a little about getting your Raspberry Pi set up to support the uh, PIDP11 uh, front panel reproduction. So I've ordered the kit. It hasn't arrived yet. It's a week or two out. But one of the things they have you do up front is get a Raspberry Pi set up and ready to run. It doesn't come with the Raspberry Pi itself. So what we need to do are a few things. We need to get the Raspbian distribution, the latest one, installed on the uh, Secure Digital Card for the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi, and then we need to get the SimH software installed. And this is really all covered in the manual you'll find up on the uh, obsolescence.wixsite.com website that we've got up here. Uh, on this site, you'll find a Word document, which I've got open here. And it goes through a bunch of the, the things you need to do, but you get down to a section on setting up the Raspberry Pi. And they basically uh, take you to downloading the Raspberry Pi image. Uh, in my case, I have a 16 gig card, uh, which will work fine. They use this program called Bolina Etcher, which can read an ISO image and image a disk from it. In this case, we'll use that to image the little SD card. Uh, and then we'll get into the steps of actually installing the software. Uh, really, this applies to any kind of installing you know an OS onto a Raspberry Pi. Uh, but anyhow, in this video we're going to go all the way through to getting SimH installed on it and getting a, a PDP-11 image up and running. So a few of the things you'll need, of course, is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you need to purchase one someplace unless you already have one. I actually happen to have two and uh, one of the things I ran into was the SD card that came with one of them was bad. It either wouldn't mount or it would mount and start to image and then fail and I spent a whole lot of time assuming the card was good and I had a software or you know interface issue or whatever and it finally turned out to be the card was bad I then used the second SD card and it was just fine so I've got a Raspberry Pi uh, the instructions take you to the Raspberry Pi org download uh, Raspbian site here I'm going to go ahead and use BitTorrent to do the download. When I downloaded the direct zip, it was super, super slow. Uh, and I, I use BitTorrent on and off. Uh, BitTorrent, we'll go into it here. You can download from the BitTorrent.com website. It is a file sharing service where uh, rather than being a, you know an FTP host and place you're downloading the whole file for, this can go out to everybody who's sharing that file and, and grab small pieces from it. You can also see that file back up for the people to download. So I've downloaded the BitTorrent uh, uh, application here and I've got it installed. I went ahead and I'm going to do a download of Torrent and that'll get me a, a file here to download. Uh, so we've got the Torrent file. Torrent file is just a definition of I want to download this file from the internet. Let's go out and get it. Uh, this should already be associated with the BitTorrent client. So if I open the client, BitTorrent should wake up here and it's actually not on screen. Uh, it's already it's opened that up. So this is uh, the download I did earlier. I'm going to download it fresh from BitTorrent. So when BitTorrent woke up, BitTorrent sitting here in the background and it's got, I know you want to download this file. Uh, this zip file, let's go out and get it. And let me remove that out of the way here first, just so we're not writing over the top. So let me jump out to my E drive. There should be a PIDP11 folder here. Uh, I think the RAID set had to spin up there. Let's just rename that out of the way. And hopefully that'll. So make room. So we're going to download this uh, Raspbian Pi Sketch full zip. Uh, it's got a ton of development tools and other stuff in it. But I basically told BitTorrent go out from that torrent file we downloaded, read its configuration, fire up the BitTorrent client we have here, and download this file. You can see here that it's got this queued up. It's searching for peers. Uh, peers are people out there sharing this file on the open internet. It's finding a large number of them. It's starting the download here, and you can see the little green uh, bar starting to show up here. Those are blocks of the file it's downloaded, and the availability is showing out on the open internet. 
uh, where it's finding those pieces to download. So this doesn't you know, start at the beginning of the file and download it to the end. It'll look for pieces of the file, bring those individual pieces down, and assemble them all into the final file. Uh, this will take a little bit of time to run here. You know, I'm getting a pretty slow download rate. Uh, my file's already being seeded up for other people to consume from, uh, it looks like. And this is estimating 30 minutes to come down. Um, when I tried the zip directly from the website here, it, it went out to one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour. I'm assuming there was just a ton of people uh, trying to download the zip. You might ha have better luck directly downloading the zip, I don't know. But I kind of wanted to show you how to do it inside of the BitTorrent client. You can already see we're at 6% of the file downloaded. You can see the ETA time's already come down to 15 minutes. So I'm going to let this sit here and run in the background. The next thing I want to talk about while this is running is a WinImage. Let me go ahead and open WinImage up. WinImage is... is kind of shareware. Uh, they do expect you to register it. Uh, you, I actually own a copy, but I can't find the license for it someplace, so I downloaded another version. Each day that you run it consumes one of the evaluation days. I've had this installed for several months, and it doesn't get used all that much. But I'm going to use WinImage to take the current SD card I have created previously for my uh, Raspberry Pi and just back that up, and I'll show you how to do this. So in one image, I want to go to disks. I'm going to create a virtual hard disk image from a physical drive. And I've got a, uh, I think it's a Sony multi-format card reader. It's USB. It's got compact flash and SD and all, and all kinds of interfaces on it. And with it just plugged in, uh, five, five drives show up on my machine. And you can see that, you know, for the CF card and these other three cards, there's no device in it. The SD card with the previously built image I have is sitting right here, and I want to back that up. So what I'm going to say is we're going to create a virtual hard disk image from that physical drive. So we'll pick that drive. It wants to know where to put it. I'm going to stick it back out here on E in my PDP-11 folder, and I'll call it a uh, uh, SimH backup. Good enough. And we'll save that. And what this is doing now is it should be going out to that SD card, and I can see the light flashing on the interface. And it's making a backup copy. And we'll let that run in the background while we let BitTorrent do its thing here. And you can see that BitTorrent's already almost at 40% of that file downloaded. Uh, you know, Bit using BitTorrent is going to be a little friendlier on the Raspbian web, web the website, their FTP servers, etc just because all the traffic isn't getting uh, sent directly there. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things on Torrent you can download that you shouldn't. There's just a lot of stuff, and I just encourage you not to use it for things you don't have rights to. Uh, you know, I use it specifically for these kind of applications. So this is still downloading. WinImage is backing up the current build I have. If we go back, to the Raspbian site here, we will find a SHA-256 key uh, for the machine, and uh, you can download this key. I've demonstrated this in a different video, and you can create a you, you can calculate a SHA-256 checksum for the file and compare it to this to make sure you got the exact image down that you expected to get. Um, when we get the image down, we'll go ahead and do that uh, just to make sure that we didn't pick up. You know, some packets someplace off somebody's home computer that have been modified slightly, uh, you know, for malicious software or whatever. I'm sitting here trying to remember where I've got the tool installed. Uh, you're getting to see more of my desktop. It's actually not a tool I've got installed, it's standalone. Uh, well, I will sit here and search for that tool. While this is all going on in the background, won't that keep imaging? We'll let this keep downloading. It's probably on my C drive and my tools folder just because I've got a random mess of tools I've collected over the years in here. Uh, I don't see it. 
This is a collection of command line and other tools from decades of dealing with Windows machines uh, that just kind of move around with me as I need them. There's a lot of really old stuff in here. I can't think of the name of the tool at the moment, and I don't see it in here. Well, while that's running, and this is running, and we're getting close to having it done. Actually, that's the wrong web browser. I want this web browser. Calculate. Oh, come on. Shot 256. Looks like Microsoft's actually got a tool for it. So let's look at that. Shaw calculator. Let's see if I can not answer that and get it. Shaw 1 and Shaw 256. So yeah, it, it'll calculate several Shaw. So let's go ahead and, and try this Microsoft tool. Why would it move to here to get it? I don't know. Get again. And we're just going to sit here and oh, install. Okay. Let's follow along. Trust this is a safe download. It has been downloaded and installed. I'll launch it here. Haven't played with this one. Uh, we'll give it a look while we're here. Let's go back to BitTorrent, and our file's been downloaded, 100% download. So that you know that large file came down pretty quick. So let's close out of BitTorrent. Let's jump into the SHA tool. We're going to calculate a SHA-256. Let's grab the file we just downloaded from the E drive, and it was this guy right here. And it's calculated one. Let's go back to the website for the downloader and let's copy this up and see if they match. Hopefully they do. Compare. And so we've down we've grabbed the SHA. You just saw me do it. Checksum from the Raspbian website. We've calculated the SHA, checksum for the file, and they match. So we know that file came down clean based on what was published up on the Raspbian website. So uh, that's nice. I suspect we're still imaging here. This is going to take a bit. Uh, is there anything else to talk about while I get that image going? Uh, I'm kind of think through here. Uh, there actually is the other tool, and, th and this comes from the Word document on how to set up uh, SimH on your machine, is to download this Bellina etcher. Uh, it's a piece of software you can download that lets you basically select, a, select an image file, select a drive, and write that image to the drive. This doesn't seem to be able to create an image from a drive, as far as I could tell. Uh, which is why I'm using actually uh, WinImage here to image that drive. I could probably use WinImage to also write that image to my SD card. But I'm trying to follow along with the tool chain that they recommended in the Word doc. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a quick paragraph here. Download your image. We used uh, BitTorrent. I, I've got a 16 big bit card, 16 gig card. Uh, the Bellina Etcher program, and then it becomes some stuff here about basically getting your Pi fired up and running. There's a ton of tutorials out there on this, uh, but I thought I'd hit it quick here in the first part of this video, and then we'll go into actually getting uh, SimH installed and running. So I'll stop recording here, and when this gets finished, we'll come back. So WinImage has completed the backup of the current SD con card contents. You can see it's almost well, it's 16 gigabytes. It's just a raw copy of the full image. So I'm going to go ahead and ignore uh, when image trying to remount that image as a drive, I'm just going to cancel out here and close when image. And let's now fire up the uh, Bellina etcher and let's see if we can push that clean Debian 
or uh, Raspbian image out to the SD card. So we can pick the zip file we downloaded uh, here as the input. It'll take care of decompressing it uh, on the fly as it writes it. So let's open that image up. It wants to know what drive to write to. And we can see on that Sony multi-format uh, card reader we've got that uh, it's picked that device uh, by default. Actually, I had to pick it. I had to check it to get the green click. But we're going to write it here and do a continue. And we'll tell it to flash. And it always pops up with this a Windows command processor. It wants to elevate uh, the application that's running in the background to actually do the imaging. And it should start up here. And hopefully it's going to image. I can see the light blinking on the Sony adapter. And we can see here that, that it's writing. I'm not sure well how well this is showing up, but it's estimating eight minutes. Uh, so we'll just let this flash. And when this is done, we should have a uh, SD card formatted with that image we downloaded, ready to put into the Pi and play with. Thank you.